just it's mind boggling that people are still trying to find bottoms and things. Guys, we're, we're seven, eight months into, into a decline, okay? There was bear markets that traded for two, three years. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a good day. You're alive, if you're watching this, uh, that means you're good, right? If you're watching this, you can hear this, you can see me, it means you are alive. After everything else in the world, that's the most important part. Everything else during the day is a cherry on top. Luckily, I made that statement now and not before yesterday because it was a pretty quiet day. Considering all the things uh, that were on the plate for today's session, you had the PPI number came out, it came, it went, blah, 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 blah. Really didn't, you know, really didn't move the needle. Uh, more important is what happened um, before, right? Before the markets were surging, pre-market futures were higher. If you guys remember last night's video, the last thing, you know, the last thing I said uh, yesterday was, uh, the last thing the investors wanted were uh, to chase up numbers, right? To chase up numbers into uh, into an event, especially in a bear market scenario. And look what happened again today. Anybody bought pre-market or any of the top or any, any of that first move, you probably, unless it was named Netflix, and we'll get to Netflix in a second, unless it was named Netflix, uh, you probably lost money right from the word go because that's usually what happens in uh, bear scenarios. Every single, and again, it's, you know, a tired, broken record, but every, you know, if you've been watching this video for a long, long time, ever since we lost the 50-day moving average, you know the majority of time, you probably get 90, 95% of the time that if you buy stocks into strength in a bear market, you're going to get rejected uh, into some sort of supply, either daily supply or in this case, uh, you're going to see a lot of 60-minute channels. And after that first move, uh, the market did absolutely nothing, right? You had a little initial dump and every stock went sideways. So these are these are 60 minute charts, guys. These are 60 minute charts of Tesla, of Amazon, of Nvidia, of Apple, right? Uh, of the queues, you can see, you know, look, look at the queues, look how tight everything was. And it basically showed you that there was not a pause in selling, it was basically a pause to kind of gather your head, kind of ga gather your thoughts for the next a big number and the big ne next number is the CPI uh, number going into tomorrow and here's the problem a lot of people still have nightmares waking up with cold sweats and shaking in the middle of the night because they know the last time the CPI came out it gave a 1200 point decline uh, for the Dow which was very very aggressive so that's what we're set up for tomorrow right there wasn't a lot if you again if you go through the pivots today you'll kind of see what I'm talking about so Netflix I was watching I was watching um, for going to today, right? I wanted that bottom channel. And if you look at the bottom channel of Netflix, and this is kind of a little bit more important than the non of action today, it held the bottom channel here. But here's the crazy part, right? It's not the, the fact that the stock bounced. That's not the crazy part. There were buyers came in towards the mid morning. And this is something we really have to watch for the next couple of days. There was four separate buyers that came in. Maybe it was just one guy, but if you if you have a if you have a, an option scanner like I use, for example, Flow Algo, if you use an option scanner, you'll see there was four separate trades uh, for the weekly 235, 235 calls that expire in two days. Why is that weird? Well, that's 15 points out of the money with two days left. Oh, by the way, in a bear market, something we definitely definitely want to see. Uh, we want to definitely pay attention. And oh, by the way, when the market dumped, right? If you look at the cues towards the end of the day, right? If you look at the cues towards the end of the day here, right? They had a little dump. Uh, Netflix closed within, you know, Netflix closed within a few dollars of the high. So again, it, it's not something that, you know, it's not something that there's an imminent trade there. But if you start seeing strength here tomorrow and starts taking out the five-day moving average, I think it's something to watch. I really do. Obviously, if it gets back to here. And loses this uh, this orange line that we talked about yesterday. I will I will definitely be looking at it as a short. But it's something weird when you come in fifty. You know, I think that the the premium was about four hundred thousand um, dollars. So when you come in fifteen points out of the money with two days left of expiration, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if somebody knows something, but somebody definitely bet that this thing's going up fifteen points in the next two days. We shall see," said the blind man. "We shall see." Another notable thing that continues to uh, 
uh, to definitely, definitely move the needle are financials, right? So financials couldn't rally, okay? They really couldn't rally when interest rates started moving up and now they're moving lower, right? Because if you heard what the notes said today and the Fed minutes said today, uh, it's that they're, they're, they could see, basically they could see a scenario of a slowdown in raising rates. So if they couldn't go up with the rates, well, how the hell are they gonna go up if the rates start uh, to kind of stabilize, right? And not do anything. And look at the bottom channel, for example, like a like a, um, a MA, right? Like a MasterCard, really nice looking chart, right? So financials, again, starting to break down. This thing's maybe one day away from getting a really, really good move. Uh, again, look at another day, right? Another day, another uh, semiconductor guiding lower. This afternoon, right after the close, AMAG guided lower. Again, not a crazy move down, just because again, look how much look how much the stock has already got killed. So everybody knows that any number is gonna be crappy. Everybody knows this. It's not a shock when something when you see a bad stock, a good stock looking bad, and everything in between. The most important part is stop looking for bottoms. Again, it's just it's mind-boggling that people are still trying to find bottoms and things. Guys, we're we're seven, eight months. Into, into a decline, okay? There was bear markets that have traded for two, three years. You, you're not gonna get the bottom. You're not gonna get the bottom when it's the bottom and you're buying stock above the 50 day moving average. That's how stocks start stop going up and stop the bleeding. Until then, they're just kind of going lower, moving up, going lower, moving up, going lower, moving up. So I definitely took some notes going into uh, today's session and we'll go to, to go through the pivots in a second. There's one really good pivot. Uh, just wasn't a lot of size on there uh, and everything else just did nothing. Um, Another note going into tomorrow's session. Remember when we talked about Tesla, right? So Tesla, you know, Tesla for the last couple of days, well, not a couple of days, for the last 11 days, especially on the inventory number, okay, uh, came out very light. You guys remember that? So Tesla went down 11 days in a row. Today was the first day that it closed green. You can see it's the first green candle, right? I'm very convinced because I was watching the order flow for the last couple of days. There was a massive seller yesterday uh, at 223, they couldn't clean up. And you could see that because when the rest of the market attempted a rally, it couldn't rally, okay? So um, they couldn't clean them up, the stock went lower. Today, there was a massive, I'm talking about they sat there, 215, 216, 215, 216, literally the whole day trying to clean up a, a buyer. And towards the end of the day, towards the end of the day, if you look at the five minute chart, it finally spiked up. So does that mean the buyer got cleared out, right? That they finally cleared out the buyer who's been literally selling for the last couple of days. And I know some of you guys are gonna think, well, maybe it's Elon Musk. I, I thought that as well. And then and then it, it, it kind of dawned on me, it can't be Elon Musk. Uh, they report earnings uh, in the next couple of weeks, I think in the next couple of weeks or so, uh, there's there's a there's a there's a blackout period that uh, insiders can sell stock. He can't sell stock two weeks before uh, before earnings. It has to. I think it's 90 days or 60 days. Please double check. Uh, but I, I don't think it's Elon Musk. Whoever it was, I, I think it looks like it's cleared up. Is is it possible we could get a day two rally tomorrow into the five day moving average? It's it's definitely on the table, right? It's definitely definitely on the table. Um, so after 11 days of selling, it didn't go down. It's also also notable, just like Netflix, it didn't go down with the rest of the market today when the market closed, uh, when the Nasdaq closed right and everything kind of sold off into the close. So I'm watching it, right? Here's a 60 minute view you could see here. I'm definitely watching it for tomorrow. It doesn't need to happen, doesn't have to happen, but at least it's on our radar. And again, like I say in every single video, it's more important to be prepared, right? And that's the name of the game. One name that we definitely gotta keep an eye on for tomorrow's session is Apple right, is Apple. Uh, Apple uh, sold off and is very, very close to taking out the bottom ranges. You had a lot of big put buying coming in into the name. Notably, uh, notably, there was a guy who came in, let me just look at my, let me, let me just look at my stats here. There was a guy who came in for nearly 6,500 puts of the October 28th, 137s. So $2.8 million premium. So I definitely, definitely wanna watch that as well. And the names that had big runs, right? These solar names like ENPH, right? ENPH starting to get heavy. First solar, right? Starting to get heavy. So you got financials on deck for tomorrow. You got uh, Apple looks pretty good. Maybe a possible reversal uh, for Tesla. Maybe, um, let's see here, maybe something juky pooky uh, that happens with Netflix, but more important, nothing will get settled until the CPI number comes out tomorrow at 8.30. Uh, and obviously, again, like I said a few minutes ago, people are still, investors are still shaking from the last time uh, CPI was reported on the 13th 
of September. So that's it, we're all set. Again, very, very quiet day today. You can see by the pivots here, Roblox never got here. Z never, you know, never confirmed this 270, you know, 80 arrows trading the 80s, never really confirmed it. This was literally the only trade of the day, um, at least for me, A-N-E-T, uh, and I, I talked about it last night, not usually a name uh, that I would trade. It was very, very thin and it's basically a <laughs> kind of waste of time, but it did okay, it did okay. 106 if it builds. Uh, can get hit. Here is ANET. Again, I believe we covered it last night on the video, right? Took out this whole channel here. Nice move. I think this is, I still have a little bit of a runner. I think it gets to this 102 area uh, for tomorrow. Uh, Apple again, NVIDIA never went up. Uh, and that's it, right? And that's it. So very, very quiet day. Anticipation going into the CPI tomorrow. But we definitely have storylines. We definitely have themes. We definitely have different groups that are, are, are strong. Well, not nobody's strong. Are weak. Some are weaker and some have been so exalted to the downside that even a pre-announcement, for example, on AMAT is not really shaking the room a lot compared to what AMD did a couple of days ago. But we'll see if that turns out as well. And there's another uh, selling uh, selling pressure in the semiconductor's name. So that's it, guys. We are all set up uh, just as an FYI for all uh, new uh, viewers who are joining us uh, for the first time this week or last week. There is usually no uh, video on Thursday. That's the day I kind of re uh, recharge my brain. So I will see you all you guys on the weekend update for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar or via the Squawk Box. Well, welcome aboard and I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Have a great night.